Who? What's up, guys? Welcome to season four, episode forty-six of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is J Mac Gaming. Hello. 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 What do you want to talk about today, Jen? Welcome to our podcast. Oh, welcome. Uh, I can't wait to talk about um, this true crime uh, today. Yeah? Yeah. What's that? I don't know what podcasts are all about now. or just like true crime stuff. I I don't know. Are they? <laughs> uh, there's a, a lot of them, but I don't know if it's all it's about. But that's the bit. Usually a lot of people are like, oh, the only podcasts out there are true crime podcasts. But, that's not true. Yeah. You know that. It's not you, true. You're like uh, podcast oh, fucking oh, king of the Midwest. I was going to say, I was going to say, I know it's not true, but I. Uh, then watch you run with that as a bit. I was playing a bit. I was doing a character. What character is that? That's Chad with one D, who has no idea what podcasting is. No, Chad with one D is in a trial tonight. Uh, what? Yeah, Chad. <laughs> oh, yes, correct. Yes, this Chad guy not here. knowing oh, the product yes. over here. This. No, guy. I just no, no, no. I remembered. He, I, I got. It. it took me a second. I thought that I, I had to. I was like, I said, like, what happened today? Is there a famous Chad that was in trial? And then I clicked as soon as you. We're about to speak up, Guy Kalara. As soon as you spoke, it clicked. I was like, "Oh wait, yeah, Jack Collier." Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure. What is that? Was that your phone? It was in my lap. I don't know how my mic picked that up. I can hear everything. There, I threw it on the floor. Well, if it's still sound going off, I'm still going to hear it. There's not. It sets on silent. Well, how did I hear it go? Ding ding. Because it wasn't on silent before. There we go. Let's go. We start off Monday Night Raw. You were gone for so long. I have food on the way. Uh, so I might have to leave mid-show for food. Or I might have to make you go get it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll just go get it. No, we'll just stay here in silence and let you talk about Test and Bull <laughs> for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Test defeated Bull in 829 with a pump handle slam. Bull's another guy that I kind of kind of dig, you know? I like Bull. I like Bull. Bull Buchanan, he's got a sick diving leg drop. Insane. He busted it out at like WrestleMania 17 or 18? Maybe? Am I thinking of WrestleMania 2000? I think I am thinking about WrestleMania 2000. But regardless, the dude can go. The dude can go. We're here. Time out. First off, we're here in the Allen Fieldhouse here live in Lawrence, Kansas. Sold out crowd in front of 16,000 Screaming WWE fans, we are six days away from Judgment Day tonight. Chad, we get the contract signing for that title unification match. PJ Black, Alex Wright. Uh, we get to learn. I mean, we just saw Kurt Angle get run over by Vince McMahon himself. Uh, what's going to come out of that? We got a, the finale of the trial of Chad Collier v. China tonight as well. And our main event, we heard the call out last week. It's Maple Leaf grappling. Teddy Hart and Chris Jericho taking on Future Shock, Randy Orton, and Mike Tyson. What a match. What a show we have in store for you. And it's all let off by Test versus Bull. <laughs> we move on. Justin Winston takes on Carl Rougeau. Ah, oh, good old Justin Winston. Ah, oh, good old me. Good old me. He hits the elevated Sentinel Shocker. And defeats Carl Rougeau in 756. Got a 56, Chad. What a good match. Hell yeah. What a good match. They got great chemistry. Um, Hell yeah, they do. Why did it... It just said it would arrive in two minutes, and now it's arriving in 11 minutes. What happened? Did he get pulled over? Did we travel... Justin, we, we traveled back in time. Did he get pulled over? He might have. Oh, that'd be so funny. No, it wouldn't. Uh, we got Roland to Paris taking on the stash and the stud here tonight. Roland to Paris. Uh, Roland Hard and Air Paris, former TNA Tag Team Champions. They defeat the stash and the stud in 1146 when Roland Hard hits his new finishing move, the flaming karate chop, <laughs> pinning Major Stash. <laughs> he sets his whole hand on fire. And we got Akira Hokoto taking on Yuki Miyazaki in the pre-show. Hokoto defeating Miyazaki in 10 5 with the greatest move in this save, the missile drop kick. A deadly missile drop kick has put many people away. And the inaugural f in a WCW Women's Champion, Kiri Suzuki, takes on, oh God, Carol Maeda. 
and she wins in 1002 with the cutie special. Good for cutie Suzuki. Good for cutie Suzuki, Chan. Good for former him. for the uh, not you know, like you said, you said yourself inaugural WCW Women's Champion. Yeah, we gotta we gotta give credit where credit is due and highlight and showcase of former shit that used to happen and former like title uh, title runs and reigns and all that shit stuff we don't usually do but stuff that you know stati- statistics that are available to us like when I asked is Ric Flair sixteen time champion in this save he's not he's only a thirteen time champion at this point. As he nice. in real life, he won three WCW titles in '99 and 2000, respectively. Never won the never won the big one in this safe. Yep, never did. Well, I mean, it's not too late yet. He's still going. No, yeah, I guess, but not W. He's not in WCW anymore. So uh, correct, but d- but you never know. I d- you never know. I doubt he wins the dub. I, d- I doubt he wins the big one over here. I'm sure he'll win the big one over there. Just give him a, just give him a good run. I give him, I'd do it. I'd do a friend night. I don't know. <laughs> you do, you do Ric Flair for a night. I'd do it for a night. Ah, ah, we start off Monday Night Raw with uh, a little recap of what happened last week, where Vince McMahon <laughs> ran over the Olympic gold medalist, the wrestling yeah, machine. Holy shit! Killed Kurt, him. Killed him. Kurt Angle, and we just have a shot. Of in his office, he's sitting down. He's got all the. He's got the black. Ba- I stood up. Why am I standing up right now? Oh, oh. you're amped up. You're, you're. I'm amped up, baby. He's got the whole Black Big Man Dynasty behind him, and they're just they watch the replay of over and over of Kurt Angle just getting fucking ragdolled over the car. And Vince McMahon laughs. He's just laughing, and he's just like. <laughs> That's why you don't cross the boss. He ran over Kurt Angle, Trent. I love how, like, the segment, every time I, I we, like, uh, we'll write down the segment and then, like, we'll read it. Like, it's, like, a weird, like, phrase, like a catchphrase. I just think, like, that'd be on a T-shirt. We're just, we're just promoting the merchandise of what they have <laughs> on their shirts. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Alex, right? I'll, I'll let you know what the driver's almost here, by the way. He's almost here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just let me know. I'll just, he just, I'll walk out. He warns Alex Wright not to sign the contract and just give up the belt. Just give up. He's just pre-warning him right now. You saw what happened to Kurt Angle. Don't become a victim too. Don't cross the boss, Alex Wright. We move on our our opening match tonight. We see Sean Devari taking on the TNA Gold Rush champion or tournament winner Orlando Jordan. They have a good little match here, Chad. Orlando Jordan takes it to Sean Devari. And he gets the job done beating Sean Devari when Crowbar. Yes, that's right. The creepy little fellow that's been watching Sean Devari matches lately finally steps in and interferes on behalf of Orlando Jordan. Maybe not on behalf, but attacks Sean Devari, causing Orlando Jordan to beat the former European champion here. A big win for Orlando Jordan. Big win for Orlando Jordan. Sean Devari not happy that he lost tonight. <laughs> it was actually this is like furious. So that's how that's how over Sean Devari is because I put him in a segment because of, instead of Sean Stasek, he's here by the way. He's outside. Oh, cool. All right, I'll be right back. All right, we move on. Yes, we have the creepy little corner, fe- uh, creepy little fella in the corner. Is he just stands over Sean Devari and breathes uh, heavily. We got a tag team match here tonight. It's Linda Miles and Lita taking on Toshi Yamatsu and her our stable mate, I guess, Chigusa Nagayo. And a big match. Linda Miles and Lita steal one when Lita pins Chigusa and Nagayo. A big win heading or leading towards this Yamatsu versus Lita women's championship title on the line. What a f- Lita getting a 63, 63 for Nagayo. Yamatsu, 83. As the performance of her stood out as being good. She's shining over everyone in the ring. 69. Nice. We move forward. The finale of the trial of Chad V. China. And the judge, after hearing everyone's case, as awarded. Why'd you go in? Why do I hear your door opening? What's he doing? Does he, did Chad take my food? I didn't want, know if you wanted me to go in while you were, like, talking, so I put it outside your door. So bring it in here. Okay, cool. I'll be right back again. Chad, stealing my food alive. 
the judge, Chad, the judge, I'm going to watch him walk in. The judge has decided after hearing all of the things that at judgment day, there will be a match between China v. Chad. And it will be a match. I don't remember what kind of title match I booked. I think I booked the first blood match. And if Chad loses, the loser, not even if Chad loses, the loser of said match will have to, you know, it's a restraining order against the loser of the match, and they will have to join the SmackDown brand. So, Brad, Brad, Brand. There we go. I'm stupid. China v. Chad at Judgment Day. I think it's first blood. So, whoever bleeds first. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Whoever bleeds first has to sign a restraining order against the other one and has to join the other brand, Chad. Damn. That's what the judge has decided. Fig's pretty happy. Lenny Lane is there just as a witness still. JBL left. JBL cracked open a beer and left the uh, the the courtroom. Yeah, for sure. Lenny Lane's a real one, though. Lenny Lane is a real one. We go... To commercial after that, Chad. And we see a big Viagra commercial. <laughs> and oh. we, we come back <laughs> and Booker T's with Scott Steiner and he says, Hey, Bo- hey Scott, we, we, we've had a, we've, we fought wars together. We fought wars alongside each other. Now we're both here in a different, different, you know, different environment. We're here on Monday Night Raw. We fought we we fought with each other. We bled with each other on WCW and on SmackDown. Let's do it here on Monday Night Raw. You I respect you. You respect me. Let's go in the ring and just have a great wrestling match and show why everybody here on Monday Night Raw why we are two of the most dominant superstars on this brand and everyone should be looking out for Booker T and Scott Steiner. And Scott Steiner says, "Yes." Yeah. So they have a match at Judgment Day, Chad. A mutual respect between the former Gentlemen's Club members that they go one-on-one at Judgment Day. I dig that. I like that. We move forward. You know, this it's, this is a go-home show, so you're not expecting a lot of big matches tonight. But this is a big match, I think, Chad. This is the biggest match in all of professional wrestling. The greatest main event on Monday Night Raw. And I'm not talking Damian Priest, Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I'm talking... Kaiji Muto and Ray Lapon. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're telling me. Talk about big time. Kaiji Muto defeats Ray Lapon in 1529, making him tap out to the figure for leg lock, Chen. Big match oh, right yeah. there. Big match. Big. For Kaiji Muto. Bust out an 83 for this. Yeah. Well, he's. Yeah. Alex Wright has been in it. He's being interviewed by Kevin Kelly. And Kevin asks him, Hey, you heard and you saw what happened to Kurt Angle. You heard the warning shot by Vince McMahon. What is it? What are, where, where does this leave you, Alex Wright? Are you going to go out there and sign that contract to fight PJ Black? Or are you going to come out smart and just back away? And Alex Wright's like, I didn't. I didn't come this far to let Vince McMahon use those scare tactics to take me out of the world title. He's not going to take away this world title unless he takes it out of my cold, dead hands. There's not one thing, no, I mean, no matter how many cars he hits me with, no matter how many blindside attacks led by psychosis and Mark Henry, no matter how many times the number game comes against me, I will not give up. I will not lay down to the Black McMahon dynasty and a judgment day, I will come out the unified world champion. And you can count on that, Kevin Kelly. I have Jerry Seinfeld by my side. I have all of Hollywood by my side. I have Kurt Angle by my side. I'm doing this for the people. I'm doing this for everyone that's ever been bullied by multiple people, by anyone stronger or in power. I'm doing it for everyone out there. Alex Wright is walking out the unified champion. We mark, we we move down stage, down stage, now, uh, to the to the ring, Chad. We got Edge versus Danny Basham. As a ju- yeah. At Judgment Day, we see the Bashams taking on Edge and Christian. A good little match here. Edge defeats Danny Basham with a missile drop kick. Hell yeah, brother. He's busting it out like, again. Like I said, or like you mentioned today too, that's, that's put many people away. 
the greatest move in professional wrestling history. It, it, I, I mean, it's hard to argue. Uh, no one's ever kicked out of it. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna say that now. You know, no one's ever kicked out of the missile drop kick. Uh, after the match, though, Doug Masham blindsides Edge with a ch- with a title. John, he took the title from Lillian Garcia, and he attacks Edge with it. It's not even his title. And uh, out come Dylan Martin and Gabriel Burton to scare off the Bashams and showcase and show their love and respect for those the, the tag team champions from Canada, Edge and Christian Cage. Bashams, Edge and Christian, Judgment Day. A couple days away, Chad. couple oh, days yeah. away. I know I said Kaiji Muto and Ray LaPon was the biggest match of Monday Night Raw history, but this next match might be the biggest match in Monday Night Raw history. As we got Johnny Curtis and Jushin Liger. Contain, yeah. contain your excitement. <laughs> I was speechless. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I don't want to injure people tonight. All right? Jushin Liger defeats Johnny Curtis in 1207 with a Shote. Uh, what do you know about the Shote, Chad? Hey, I, cool. I don't know. All right. I don't know nice. anything about the Shote. Nice. We go backstage where Triple H walks up to Demo, walks into the, the BCC's locker room, and um, he talks to Dean Malenko here, Chad. They both have a, a, a common enemy right now, Sean Morley. And even though they have a one-on-one match at Judgment Day, Triple H asked Dean Malenko, hey, Sean Morley's getting under my skin. He's getting under your skin. We, I don't know how you actually feel, Dean, because you're a wall of emotion right there. Just look at your face. But I fucking hate the guy. I want any chance to whoop his ass. So I'm giving you a proposition. I know we have a one-on-one match, Dean, but how about we let him in? We give it a triple threat match, and we kick his ass. And when we get rid of him, it's just me and you in the ring, and we have a classic wrestling match. And Dean Malenko says, I like what you're saying, Triple H. Let's do it. Triple H, Dean Malenko, Sean Morley, triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship now, Chad. Huge. Huge. Uh, That that could... I'm predicting 100. 100? Wow. I'm 100. Wow. We get to our main event, though, John. It's Chris Jericho and Teddy Hart. Maple Leaf Grappling taking on Future Shock. Who do you got, John? Oh, I got Maple Leaf Grappling. Maple baby. Leaf Grappling. Well, these tag teams, they Chris Jericho hates Randy Orton right now, John. He hates him. And Teddy Hart's just happy to be here. Mike Tyson, not really a wrestler, but he he does his best. This match ends when Chris Jericho and Teddy Hart bring it to him. Randy Orton actually hits an RKO on Teddy Hart, and Teddy Hart kicks out of the RKO. And that pisses Randy Orton off, Jen, to the point where he's just like, you know what, fuck this. I'm done. And they leave. They leave the match, Chad, and make believe grappling win by countout. They just said, "Fuck this." See, they're like, "I'm done. This is. I'm. I'm oh, sick yeah. of this. I'm sick of this here, Chan. I don't know why it says Mike Tyson was counted out. They were both counted out. They yeah. were both counted out. Uh, yeah. Teddy Hart being the worst of the rings, great. Tyson getting seventy six. This should not happen. But fuck it, you know. Fuck it, and we fuck move it. to our contract signing, Chan. In the middle of the ring. And the Black McMahon Dynasty, they come out, Chad. They come out. Shane, Stephanie, Linda, Vince, PJ, Psychosis, Mark Henry, all seven of them, Chad. All seven members of the Black McMahon Dynasty. They come out, and lonely Alex Wright comes out to the ring. Kurt Angle is hurt. He's in, who knows where he's at. Alex Wright gets into the, the ring, sits down at the table. PJ's at the table. The six McMahon members behind him. And Vince is like, hey, remember this. This is not just your title on the line. This is your life. You're stepping in not only with the ring with PJ Black, but you're stepping in the ring with all of us. All right? It might just be him legally, but you got to deal with all six of us. 
Alex. And remember who signs your paycheck, Alex Wright. Remember, look what happened to Kurt. Do not put yourself in that situation like he did. Don't cross the boss, Alex Wright. Alex Wright stands up and he flips Vince McMahon off. He signs the contract and he jumps over the table attacking PJ Black. Bah, 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 bah. But, you know, there's seven other people in the ring and they attack and beat down Alex Wright. And they all stand victorious over Alex Wright. PJ Black, one title in one hand, the other title in the other, standing tall over Alex Wright. Is this the picture we're going to see in six days? New Orleans, Louisiana, Judgment Day 2002. Alex Wright, PJ Black, title unification. That's the show. A 90. Nice. Hell yeah. Hell. A, sick, a very sick closing image, by the way. Big closing image. We got a huge, That's it's going to be a huge night. And SmackDown may be even bigger. But before we get to that, Nitro, six days away from Halloween Havoc. A lot to get done. We'll see you then. We will see you. And we are here for Monday Nitro, the go home to Halloween Havoc. The last stop before we get Shawn Michaels versus Shane Helms. Yeah. What a match that will be. And we, of course, the Wild Ones versus the Wicked for the Tag Team Championships. Minami Toyota versus Trish for the Women's Belt. And many, many more. Many, many more. Uh, many more. Money. Bam, bam, bam. Money. Money. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. We have a pre-show match here. Kendo Cashin taking on Alfred Snow. And in a pre-show about that decent wrestling, but not much heat. Kendo Cashin defeated Al Snow with a Juju Katami. Ah, if you've done your research into Kendo Cash and Ted, we should have. That's what we should have done today. That's that's what we should have done today. We should have watched the Kendo Cash. We were match. watching like old matches of guys that we don't really know a lot about in the save, but are really over. Like we were watching Debbie Malenko and C.W. Anderson. We that was a bad C.W. Anderson match. I think watching 2010 C.W. Anderson is probably not the way to go. I think the thing I was the most shocked about was the Chase Tatum match we watched. Dude, Chase Tatum. He's a fucking giant. He's huge. Dude, he doesn't look like it. If you go like you go to like his picture, where the fuck is it right here? He I mean, he kind of looks like it right there a little bit. Right? He looks like a big boy. Right. Yeah. He's a former world bodybuilder, Mr. Georgia bodybuilder, Chad. That's crazy. Of course. He's got 80 to 88. We should have known. We should have known. Well, I, I, I did know. You just uh, he got caught of hard drugs. Oh, that was with you. He got caught yeah. with steroids with me. Oh, he's just a piece of shit. Big drug boy. Big big drug boy. Uh, big shout drug up, boy. shout up, buff. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have another pre-show match. Cole Cabana taking on Flash Flanagan. And. And I appreciate about that terrible wrestling and now in the crowd. He Colt Cabana defeated Flash Flanagan in 735 with the Colt 45. Colt Cabana, former member of Tough Enough this season. Flash True. Flanagan, former... Uh, that's all I know about him. He's a former. That's all I know. What the hell was that, Chad? Hmm? Were you, are you... Don't I was taking a drink. I was, I was taking a drink of my drink. Promise? I pinky promise. I heard a... Yeah, it's from my straw. Mm, I'm on to you. Uh, That's fair. uh, Not on live recordings. Come on now. You're better than that. uh, Anyway. Was I right? No, I was taking a drink. (laughs) I'm on to you. (laughs) We're going to get demonetized because you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. Anyway... Are you, are you good? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm I'm, just, I'm in next segment. Oh fuck! This is my show. What yes. am I talking about? Sorry, it's sorry, the drugs trying, getting to uh, you. No, all right. It wasn't, it wasn't. I, I was knew it was. You were smoking on live. I, I knew it. I knew I it. I was. You're I high as hell right now. No, no. Anyway, okay. 
Anyway, we start out Monday Nitro. We have Shane Helms and Shawn Michael Shane Helms. He comes down to the ring and he says, well, once again, I have to come out here and, 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 and try to bring Shawn Michaels. You know, listen, I just wanted to have a conversation with Shawn Michaels one-on-one, but he continues to make me jump through these hoops. You know, he keeps saying he doesn't believe in me. He says that I'm not worthy of a championship match with Shawn Michaels. But, well, listen, Sean, okay, you wrestled one of my former uh, dojo brothers for Sh- Shannon Moore, and he went toe-to-toe with you. And I learned from the same guy. I ca- I'm cut from the same cloth, and damn it, I'm one of the best today. All right, and, and I'm sick and tired of having to prove it to you, but if I have to keep doing it, then why don't you come out here and tell me what I have to do next, huh? And then Shawn Michaels, he comes out, and he's got his big old belt, and he says, Shane, you're right about one thing. I definitely don't think you deserve to have a championship match against me. But to be fair, I don't think anyone deserves a championship match against me. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to once again book you against a former world champion of WCW's past. And let's see if you can go toe-to-toe against them. How, how, so, about, how about Shane book Shawn Michaels in a match? <laughs> yeah. no. Sh- well, listen, uh, he, he, Shawn Michaels flat out said, uh, listen, uh, he said last week, listen, I don't wrestle on free TV. Well, neither, should, neither do I, and here I am. And here you are. <laughs> ah. All righty, so we have here a tag team match to open the show. We got the FBI, Johnny Stamboli, and Tony Mamaluke taking on a, a, a team. So, you know, we've seen Ahmed and Ron Simmons. You know, they've been hanging around. They've been a little chummy recently. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ahmed, he is known for his uh, – his, well, he, he's former world champion in his own credit, but he's also a multiple-time tag team champion. And and Ron Simmons he was part of a, a, a tag team uh, for a place he used to work for. And so they thought, what better way than to form a little group here? And they called themselves the Ahmed Protection Agency, the APA, taking on the FBI. And about that decent reaction from the crowd, but some part wrestling. Ahmed and Ron the Simmons. APA. The APA. Where, where are we going with this, brother? <laughs> the Ahmed Protection Agency. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, they're, the, uh, they're the Ahmed Protection Agency. I have APA trademarks, so you're going to have to call them that. No APA. Yeah. I got I got trademarks all across the land, Chad. All right? Remember that. Remember that. I got trademarks. Tell me about this segment. Yes, we have here. Um, so we, we, flat, we go to a bar full of people and it's like justin it's it's like a it's like a it's a it's a big dive bar it's a real uh it's a real hole in the wall dive bar full of people right and um especially for weird for a monday but everyone's out drinking they got they got they got something some game on in the background and and the wild boys are all just hanging out right they got they're they're slugging they're they're drinking beers um and, and and you know and chase tatum he says wicked at Halloween Havoc, you're in our house. A barroom brawl? We get into bar fights for fun. Hell, it's how we all became friends. We all came here after our first uh, NXT uh, tryout. And we all decided to kick back and have some beers. And one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, we cleared this place out, got bloody battered. And I think even Dave went to jail. But it's what forged us. And if you think you're going to take these tag team titles from us, if you think you're going to beat us in our own, in our house, you got another thing coming. Let's show them how wild we can be, boys. And then all of them, Justin, get in a big bar fight. They just start fighting with the people in the bar. Ah. Ah. And they clear it out. And then they all cheers and crack open more beers. Ah, as we all do. As we all do. We've got a tag team match here. We got Rob Van Dam and Mikey Whipwreck taking on Canyon. And, and listen, you know, Mikey Whipwreck and Rob Van Dam, you know, they wanted to have this tag team match. but So Canyon needed to find a partner. And Fit Finley said, I'll help you fight, like, like sh- sh- shut up Rob Van Dam and that little nerd Mikey Whipwreck. And so Finley's here to be Canyon's tag team partner. And in about that good wrestling, it is reaction from the crowd. Canyon and Fit Finley defeated Rob Van Dam and Mikey Whipwreck in 10-9 when Canyon pinned Mikey Whipwreck. 
Damn, already taking a fucking loft of Finley here? Ooh. Listen. I'm telling you, Mikey Whipwreck ain't shit, brother. <laughs> He's now 4-42 and 42 in the last two and a half years. Add another one to the loss, Pa, brother. Add, add another one. After that match, Rob Van Dam and Canyon, you know, they, they're starting... You know, Canyon started talking some shit to Rob Van Dam while he was getting his arm raised. And so Rob Van Dam, like, rolled back in the ring. And they went, like, nose to nose. And Rob pushed Canyon. And Canyon pushed Rob. And they started fighting. Do they kiss? They do not kiss. Uh. Unless you consider... Unless, like, you know, maybe Canyon kissed Rob Van Dam with his fist. There we go. I like yeah. it. I like yeah, it. That's what you do. What's their tongue in <laughs> <laughs> No, all thumb. We got Devon Dudley taking on Kip James. Devon Dudley, I rate, you know, in, in his point of view, he should be uh, having an opportunity to fight Sting or Taka uh, at, at Halloween Havoc. But instead, he's not even booked, and he's outraged, quite frankly. Uh, so he takes it out on Kip James, and Devon beats Kip James with a Dudley death drop. Who did Devon lose to last week? He a uh, relic. That's what it was. He should be more upset yeah. that he lost to Relic than. I think I think I definitely think that didn't add to that doesn't that, that doesn't uh, help his situation. No, no, right? he is getting frustrated for sure. Poor Kip James, man. Poor yeah. Kip James didn't even get like. Sean just kind of threw him to the side, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, Kip James just kind of Sean just kind of stopped answering his text messages. Yeah, him and Eddie Cologne, like what the hell, brother? They were. A big group, right? Eddie Cologne was with Sean and yeah, no, you're not wrong. Yeah, what happened there? Nash, Nash and Hall were there too. Why'd that group disband? Uh, Bret Hart had to face them all one on one, um, in the build up to Starcade. And if he beat them, he was out of they were out of the click. Oh, oh poor Eddie Cologne. Poor Eddie Cologne. We have just an, an update on Chris Benoit with his collapsed lungs. And uh, Chris Benoit is joining us from his home where he is recovering from his collapsed lungs. He can barely talk. He sounds very, like, very um, winded, like he's just out of breath. I mean, he can barely speak. Um, but he is able to say that he he uh, he doesn't know when he's coming back. But when he does come back, he's going he's gonna to take back that United States championship. But more importantly, he's going to take out Big Daddy V. I'm going to take out Big Daddy V2, probably to a nice steak dinner. I mean, he is the champ after he all. He is the champ. We have, Justin, a tag team match here. We got Nicole Bass and Minami Toyota taking on Mariko Yoshida and Jazz. And in about that decent wrestling, but little heat, Nicole Bass and Toyota defeated Yoshida and Jazz when uh, Minami Toyota pinned Mariko Yoshida with an Ocean Queen B-bomb. Oh, shout out Nicole Bass. Shout out Minami shout Toyota. Out Put up a 75. Yeah, well, she's one of the greatest of all time, brother. And after the match, Justin, uh, these two former champ oh, well, not these two former champions, Nicole Bass, the former women's champion, and Minami Toyota, they they come down to the ring and they celebrate. I guess Minami Toyota is a former women's champion, too. These two champions. In WWE, champions, yes. Still- oh, yeah, because she had steroids, didn't she? Hey, well, we're still still a former women's champion, just now at WCW. Uh, but anyway, these two are celebrating in the uh, on the ramp, and from behind, they're they're jumped by Trish Stratus and Debbie Malenko. Oh, that's not very, and well, that's not a good thing to do. That's... And then they and again, and once again, you know, but Trish Stratus and Debbie Malenko, they're uh, they they don't want to wait till Halloween Havoc. Uh, but what do you mean they? Not... Is it a tag match all of a sudden? Well, no, but Debbie Malenko, she said she would be in Trish's uh, corner. Ah. Uh, and, but yeah, so and Trish is ready to fight now. Nicole Bass is like uh, able to compose herself and like get in between yeah, she's Trish a fucking and, and giant and Toy- brother. And then Toyota is able to escape. Mm. We have here we have Jeremy Borash. He's Jeremy Borash is here and he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, at Halloween Havoc, we have possibly a David versus Goliath situation on our hands." Matt Seidel. Giant Singh will go one on one, and the loser of that match will be eliminated from Tough Enough. Now, we've asked everyone here while they were waiting in line to get into Nitro today, we asked them who they thought were going to win with Giant Singh and Matt Seidel. And we took all those answers and we put them in a poll. And, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see down here below, you can see the percentages of people who think Giant Singh is going to win 
versus Matt Seidel. You can see Giant Singh here has a 95% chance against Matt Seidel, who has a 5%, of course. So, you know, the, the odds are stacked against Matt Seidel's favor. Now, you can see here, and it pans to a split screen of Seidel and, Matt's, and uh, Giant Singh. They're both, like, training, right? there. You can see both men taking this very seriously. Seriously, Giant Singh taking an account for Matt Seidel's quickness, whereas Matt Seidel, of course, he, well, Giant Singh is a giant. So who will win? You'll have to find out on Halloween Havoc this Sunday. I think I'm going to win. You're and not I, in the match, Jeff. Well, I don't have to watch tough enough, so I, I win. I mean, that's fair. You, you know how I feel about it not being randomized this year. Takes away the spirit. I know. Ooh, take it, speaking have, of the spirit... Yes, we have Big Daddy V versus Tommy Dreamer. I don't know about that good wrestling. Uh, Big Daddy V, you know, he, he he wanted just he he asked for a match tonight. He asked to defend his United States Championship, and he just brutalizes Tommy Dreamer. Just once again, just 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 he goes to the top rope. He does a big splash on a Tommy Dreamer. Uh, he it's it's just a, a beatdown, and Tommy Dreamer retains his belt. Do his lungs collapse? His lung, you know what people? That's what people are asking. They said, "Are Tommy Dreamer's lungs collapse like Chris Benoit?" And Bobby Heenan said, "I don't know, but if they if he keeps this up, he's not going to have any opponents left to fight for the U.S. Championship." Man. So good plan. There you go. But he also is wearing himself out. He is wearing himself mm, out. Got to think about it. Exactly. Um. Okay. Well, there's supposed to be a segment there. I think when I was moving something around, I think it got bumped up on that. A boy. So, they win the match, and then we go to the Wicked versus the Hollies here in a tag team matchup. Of course, the Wicked had that big tag team match against the Wild Boys, but tonight they take on the Hollies. And Abyss pins Hardcore Holly with a shock treatment, and it was a very um, decisive win. Uh, but Hollies, they, they put up a – oh, I don't want to say they put up a hell of a fight. They gave a good effort, but uh, Relic – or not Relic, Mills Mortez and Abyss, they made quick work of them. As they should, brother. It's fucking... Maybe yeah. two years ago, Hardcore Holly would have gave him a run. But now he is just the... Uh, he's a shell of what he used to be. Uh, in ring right. and overness. And it's just... It's sad to see. But a good win yeah, for... Because he, he was relatively over. Dude. Um, yeah, that and was good in the ring. He's pulling out fucking 40s yeah. now, brother. You have, yeah, he's old. Bring on, He's another case if he comes back to the Fed. He's going to be title contention in about nine months. Um, after that, Abyss, he grabs a microphone and he says, he, he says, he says, the wild boys, they, they, they think we're scared of a bar fight. We're not scared of any bar fight. And they said, the wild, the, the, the wicked, we are a group consisting of three very violent, very unhinged individuals. Abyss says, I mean, hell, me and Mil Muertes, we met in prison. Right? And Relic, Relic was sent here from a higher power to help us secure the tag team championships from the Wild Boys. And now that higher power has brought us another advantage. To, to help us aid in our, our our quest for those tag team titles and to destroy the wild ones. We have the seeker, Paul Bear. And Paul Bear, he's here, Justin. He's he's with the wild he's with the wicked. Yeah. Or sorry, not the seeker. I have it written down wrong. The keeper. He's the keeper. Mm. The keeper, Paul Bear. And here is that promo. So after that match, we're backstage. Big Daddy V, he's, he hasn't even broken a sweat. Paul Heyman, he's just like, you see that? You see that? This, this is what I was talking about. This is the era of Big Daddy V. And 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 listen, Tommy Dreamer is just, just another victim in a long line of people who just won't be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Big Daddy V. And uh, as that's happening, Ken Shamrock, he, he, he up walks up to Big Daddy V and, uh, and he says, hey, listen, you know, not for nothing. Uh, if you're looking for somebody who uh, to, 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 to challenge the era of Big Daddy V, if you're looking for your next opponent, you know, I'm not doing anything for Halloween Havoc. Uh, I know you're not booked and I would love to kick your ass on behalf of uh, uh, Tommy Dreamer and Chris Benoit. 
And uh, Paul Heyman, he uh, he laughs. And he says, Ken Shamrock, you don't deserve a, a championship match against Big Daddy. And then Big Daddy V takes uh, – he puts his hand, his like finger out to like shush Paul Heyman. And Big Daddy V looks at Ken Shamrock and he says, you're on. <laughs> Big Daddy V versus Ken Shamrock. I didn't know Ken Shamrock was good friends with Tommy Dreamer. They they talk backstage <laughs> a lot. This seems like a typical. Hey, Ken Shamrock's here. He walks up, does this. Cool. All right, there's a match. Six days away. And Justin, after that, we hear Stephen Regal and Samoa Joe. Well, yeah, their their music hit, and uh, they come down to the ring. Samoa Joe's dressed in his ring gear. Uh, it's looking like Samoa Joe is the world championship uh, opponent for Shane Helms tonight. Was Samoa Joe really a champ? He was a universal champion. I don't remember that. He what? was? What? What? Okay, I forgot. And in our main event match, we have Samoa Joe taking on Shane Helms. And in a super match, Shane Helms defeated Samoa Joe in 1806 with a vertebraker. Once again, you know, Samoa Joe... Got in early with with his size, but his also his speed, of course, and his athleticism uh, caught Shane Helms off guard. He wasn't expecting uh, a man of Smojo's size to be so quick. Uh, Smojo made very early work of Shane Helms. Shane Helms was able to, to compose himself, get a game plan, and he was able to get a win against Samoa Joe. It's a big win for Samoa Joe. That is a big win. <laughs> after the match, after the match, Shawn Michaels. He uh he Shane Helms is like celebrating the crowd are celebrating Shawn Michaels he's like kicking he's like stomping his like leg ready to get ready to super kick Shane Helms and as Shane Helms turns he dodges the super kick and then super kicks Shawn Michaels uh, himself and the crowd goes nuts oh the crowd does go nuts I can hear him right now I can hear him from right now. And Justin, remember, Big Show invited Shaquille O'Neal to to to, to Nitro as his special guest. And here we have it. We see Big Show. He's standing in the ring. He's wearing a. He, he's got a microphone, and around him, there's like a a, a set. It's like a, 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 there's like a couch. There's like a, a little potted plant off to the side. It's looking like a talk show. And the Big Show, he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, I've got great news. We have officially um, signed, sealed, and delivered. The biggest athlete of all time now has the biggest." talk show of all time ladies and gentlemen the big show show the show where yours truly talks to all the who's who in the sports and entertainment world and i can't think of any bigger guests than to have a man who has been getting in my business lately a man who i invited here last week to have a conversation with easily the Fifth best basketball player in the NBA. Maybe like eighth, tenth, maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille O'Neal. And everyone goes nuts for Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> and Shaq is, comes out in typical Shaq fashion. He's like j- just hamming it up for the crowd. He's high-fiving everybody. He's like just blowing it up. He's like everyone's so happy to see Shaq. And Shaq gets in the ring, and and they have a uh, and they have a little discussion, right? Big Show, you know, he's he's like, Shaq, how long have you been a fan of the Big Show? And Shaq is like, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Big Show. He's like, in fact, I think the Big Show sucks. And and the Big Show, he's like, he's like, I'd be careful if I were you, Shaq, because you're on my show and Shaq stands up and he's actually taller than the big show big show's looking up and Shaq says any show that Shaq is on is the Shaq show and everyone starts chanting Shaq show Shaq show Shaq show and he says that I've heard you've been saying that you're a better athlete than me you've been talking a lot of crap about me and I you know what I came out here to do something about it and Big Show said, what are you going to do, Shaq? Are you challenging me to a free throw contest? Because guess what? I'd have you beat there. And Big Show gets in his face and he says, no, I'm challenging you to a fight. And Shaquille O'Neal, he pushes Big Show down and everyone, like, freaks out. And, and he's like, I'm challenging you to a fight at Halloween Havoc. And Big Show, he, he, he he's like... He's he's shaking his head. He's like, no, 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 absolutely not. He's he, no, you don't deserve a match against me. And Shaq said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, 
because when I first got here, I talked to, talked it over with Ted DiBiase, and we both agree that the thing that would make the most money is Big Show versus Shaquille O'Neal at Halloween Havoc, and everyone loses their minds at this big addition to the pay per view card, and um. After that match, you know, uh, Shaq, he turns around to, like, ham it up with the uh, with, with, with the crowd. Big Show, he, like, looks like he's going to sucker punch Shaq. Uh, and the crowd literally just all point behind you! And Shaq, he turns around, and he just throws a haymaker of his own. And Big Show rolls out of the ring because he's thrown off guard. And then Shaq just parties with the crowd today in Tallahassee, Florida, to send us home. Boop. 90. Wow, we tied. 90. We tied. We tied. We tied. You tied with a go home show, huge. Chad. Congrats. That's huge. That's huge. Well, unfortunately, you got a big smackdown ahead of you tonight. So, yeah, big smackdown. <laughs> I always, if I have brand exclusive pay per views, I always make the fourth uh, week of the uh, opposite brand have a, a mega big show. show. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure on the last brand exclusive one I had, I'm pretty sure on the go home, the, I had like. Two title matches on the other cards. Yeah. Card. So I yeah, think I think I'm doing the similar strategy. Yeah, just gotta make it compete somehow. Because uh, right. having Edge and or Jushin and uh, fucking Rail Upon, you know, only so much right. I can compete with that. But that is Nitro. Yes, it is. We will see oh, you for cool. Halloween. Happy. I was letting you carry it. It's your show. You carry this video. Justin, I gotta ask. And we are here, Justin. Uh, I know you. Uh, I don't know if you said this in the video or not, or maybe off camera, but you were hyped about the SmackDown. So I'm excited to see what you have. I'm in always store. hyped about SmackDowns, Jan. Always. Why would I not be always. hyped about my SmackDown? Hey, that's a good question. I don't know. Are you always hyped about your shows? I'm always hyped about my shows. Then why would you even think that I wouldn't be hyped about one of mine? Fair enough. No, answer the question, Chad. Don't deflect. Answer the damn question, Pringle. I don't know. Go home shows you're usually. Uh, this is going to go home. To- I guess you're right. It's not a go home. Wow, oh, you just. There we go, show. This is. You're just not in. You're on cloud nine over there, Chad, aren't you? I'm just. I don't know. I'm just. just I'm just here. You're just on I'm cloud nine. It's on cloud nine, Chad. Speaking of being on Cloud9, we're here live in the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri for a Super Smackdown. We got a huge show tonight, Chad. Huge show. Let's look at the local workers just to look. We got Dick the Cock. Dick the Cock. Steve McMichael. And Stone Cold Steve Lost. Maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> looked at this. I hurt yeah. my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> we start off Friday Night Smackdown with a uh, singles match here in the pre-show. We got Rob Conway taking on Just Incredible. And we got a big win with the Iron Fist, courtesy of Rob Conway, defeating Credible in 10-22. A decent little match there, Chad. Hell yeah. And our other pre-show match, Yoshihiro Tajiri, hitting his patented brain buster on Gang Crow. And getting the pinfall in 950 with that said brain buster. I said, get your last squeak in, and uh, you decided to get one more in? You thought you could sneak one by me over there? Oh, sorry. I, yeah, my bad. Chad's, so you squeaked three more times? <laughs> Chad's got the squeakiest chair of, in like all time. All time history. Yeah, it's very, it's very comfortable, and it was very cheap, but it was because it's very squeaky. Yeah, we gotta put some WD forty on and some KY jelly on that bad boy. Yeah, I used to get a new chair eventually. Yeah, well, yeah, probably. You just gotta rearrange your room. Yeah, you don't have. I don't think you have space for a new chair. I don't think I do either. All right, let's move to the first segment. I know what I do, but you know what I do have space for? The rest of the SmackDown. You, bu- I swear to God, I will make you sit on your bed for the rest of the SmackDown if you squeak one more fucking time. <laughs> I'm joking, Chad. <laughs> I'm not moving a muscle. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, we... What's happening? What's happening here? Uh, Eric Bischoff has a Knights of the Round Table kind of segment, town hall promo here. 
He's got the leaders of the big the big three stables, is what we're now calling them, the big three of the family, led by Stevie Richards, Jeff Jarrett of Double J Records, and Jim Cornette of the Final Bosses, and Eric Bischoff. He loves the stable warfare, but he doesn't love all the attacking, all the 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 the, the mayhem that this stable warfare has caused. So tonight. He's sanctioning some of that mayhem in the ring tonight. We have three triple threat matches tonight. Each one of those matches uh, feature one member of said stable. We have, oh, well, you'll find out who they're actually, we're not going to spoil who it's going to be in each match right now. We'll, you'll find out when it actually arrives That's to fun. I like that. the said action. We'll move on, Chad. We we knew, we found out last week. We didn't really find out. It was announced by the Cruiserweights themselves. So we got a battle royal tonight for the Light of Weight Championship. 20 men are in the ring, Chad, including Light of Weight Champion Shanna Moore, Kid Cash, Two Colt Scorpio, Super Callow, Nunzio, fucking Mikey Henderson's in there, Chad. Battle Royal to start off. Friday Night Smackdown. Who do you got? I'm going Mikey Henderson. You got Mikey Henderson winning the belt? Yeah. <laughs> well, this match was won by Shannon Moore, Chad. It came down to that's Shannon Moore and Super... That's to, be, that's to be expected, yeah. It came <laughs> down to Shannon Moore and Super Callow, but Kid Cash and Two Cold Scorpio came back in and eliminated. They dumped out Super Callow. The two members of the Funk Boys that were already eliminated took out Super Calo, letting Shannon Moore slither away with his light heavyweight championship. A great match here, Chad. It also had, like, uh, King Ayakeo and Chris Devine in it. And a new picture for B.J. Whitmore. Hell yeah. Got kind of 77. Good for them. Good. Good little bit I, love, I love defending in a battle royal. I love that idea. Yeah. A lot of poor gimmicks and low morale causing this match to be bad. But, oh well. I like how this match is fine with members like uh, Segment didn't get a, uh, didn't get a uh, penalty for um, the amount of people in it. But the Rumble can or a one-on-three handicap match will get a penalty for a number of competitors. That's fucking horseshit. Fix your game. Why are some matches yeah, get penalized for it, but a one-on-three match won't or will, and yeah, this that's, won't? That's that's Rumbles, stupid. Rumbles can't be good because it has that penalty in it. It's my least favorite thing about doing a rumble, that it always gets a penalty for number of uh, competitors. It's fucking. Stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. Speaking of stupid, yep, they slither away with that champion. Chip Bell. I forgot to put Malene in this. Oh, well. But she did help out more. She actually uh, fluffed him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was getting the getaway car ready. She she was already, yeah, she already had the car parked at the ramp. Uh, she was driving a, what, did, what car does she drive, Chad? Hmm, I'll let you decide. Funky. Something funky. She strikes me as like a Lamborghini type. You think she's fitting four big grown men in there? Yeah. I guess Chad has never seen a Lamborghini. <laughs> All right, we move on. We got a tag team match here, Chad. Ooh, a tag team match. Oh, yeah, I wanted between, to who, between, between what teams? Oh, we got Sting, WWF, and Stevie Ray. Oh. <laughs> Taking on the best of both worlds, John Cena and Ric Flair. No. And Ric Flair. What, what the hell is that what? about? What a team! What a tag team matchup this is. <laughs> John Cena and Ric Flair and his protege John Cena here, Chad. I love, no, no, I love that. It's just their opponents are so crazy. WCW legends Sting and Stevie Ray. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, for Chad. The Nitro, the Nitro legends, uh, Sting, WWF, and Stevie Ray. Sting's fighting for the million dollar bracket championship in two days. Do yeah, show some respect to Sting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> we go backstage where C.W. Anderson is having a little talk with Johnny Storm, contemplating. You know, you know he he's had a great run in the tag team division, but after these last couple of weeks, you know, of beating the Undertaker and Kane, maybe he's got a future in the single division. And Johnny Storm's like, C.W. Anderson. We we did a lot. We were, we were great champions, but I got your back, 
in whatever uh, in whatever whatever avenue you want to follow through. If you want to go fight, go in your singles run. Just know I got your back the whole way through. And C.W. Anderson says, "That's so why I love and respect you, Johnny Storm." I guess this is goodbye. And Johnny's like, "I guess this is goodbye then." C.W. Yeah. Anderson making his way to the singles title runs, Chad. And his singles Man, division. What's Johnny, what's Johnny Storm gonna do? I don't know, Chad. That's for. Uh, you can't. You're not gonna know tonight. You're gonna have to tune in to find out. Fair enough. C.W. Anderson not on his own. How do you feel about C? Never mind. <laughs> Let's move on to Renee Dupree and Paul London. A great match, but Paul London sneaks a win over Renee Dupree with a quick roll up, quick cradle. Paul London getting a big win over La Resistance member Renee Dupree, former international champion. Big win for Paul London here, Chad. That's a big win. That is a big win. <laughs> well, I'm, that, so, I'm so giddy today. I'm, so, I'm laughing about everything. Why is this funny? I don't know. <laughs> Got a 73. <laughs> Hi, Connor. How you doing? Hi, Connor. Uh, Taker. Is, uh, he wakes up. He's still in hell, Chad. He's still in a dark black hole. But he wakes up, and, and you know, Kane and Connor, they're not they're not laughing at him this time. He just wakes up, and he's just in depths of hell, but in silence. And he, he look, he gets up. He's like, okay, <sighs> maybe maybe it's time to look for an escape, or maybe try to get out of this wherever the fuck I am. And he just walks around, and there's a big light at the end of the, down the hallway. Not, not a hallway, but just. Down in the down there, you know. I'm pointing. You can't see me point, Chad. You can't see me point. But there's an entrance or an exit over there. He just sees a neon sign that says exit. And he just walks, walks, goes over. And as soon as he, as soon as he's like five feet away, the light, the door bursts into flames. And Kane and Connor's oh. face. <laughs> You're never leaving, Taker. <laughs> And uh, that's it, Chad. As Taker just sits there in disbelief as he watches uh, a, a escape route burn to flames. Damn. How what is the Undertaker going to get back? What is this? Where is he, Chad? I, I, I'm assuming hell. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm in hell right now because I got to talk to you. We move on. Oh, Our first of the trip. That was unnecessarily mean. <laughs> Our first triple threat match of the night, Chad. Masawa, Chris Harris, and Scotty to Hardy, Chad. What a match. What a match. Chris Harris in the ring with the world champion. And they and have Scotty Karate. Well, yeah. But Chris Harris and Misawa have a little standoff. A little standoff. And Misawa, you know, gets a punch in. Harris punches him back. Misawa punches him. Harris punches him. Harris is giving it to the WWE champion. Then Scotty Tuhati comes in and he tries to stand toe to toe. And Chris Harris clotheslines him. And they, and then he just looks back at Masawa, and they keep going at it, going at it. And then Masawa hits uh, a Tiger Driver on Chris Harris. Scotty Tuhati is finally back to his senses after that big clothesline from Chris Harris. Masawa hits the Tiger Driver on Scotty Tuhati, and he picks up the win, pinning. Uh, you can't say pin both of them, but he pins both of them. Big win. Big win for the WWE champion. Who would have thought Chris Harris would have been in the match with Masawa? We go. To a um, a shot of the Guerrero household, Chavo and Mystico have arrived there, and they enter the household where we saw Latin lover standing over an unconscious Eddie Guerrero and family, and the house is empty. The house is empty. It's ransacked still. It looks like a fucking tornado went through, and Chavo and Mystico have no idea what the hell's going on. And Chavo's like, "Fuck!" And Mystico looks over. He's like, "Chavo, what's that?" And it's a note. And they read the note and they said, God damn it. This motherfucker. And we fade the black there, Chad. What's the note say? Oh, man, I don't know. What's the note say, Chad? It's his grocery list. We move on. Don Fry backstage is hanging out with Arn Anderson and Cactus Jack. He's here. And he blindsides Don Fry, and he chokes out Arn Anderson, Chad. He chokes him out. Don Fry gets back up and attacks Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack just gets away, but he's done. The damage is done. Arn Anderson choked out here by Cactus Jack, and Don Fry's pissed off, Chad. 
And you don't want to piss off Don Fry. We yeah, just I saw just him. Gonna, I was just gonna say you, you saw what he did to Goldberg. You, you don't want to piss you off. You saw what Don he Fry. did. You saw what he did to Cactus Jack at Bad Blood. You don't want to do. You don't want to get mad. We move on. Our co-main event, another triple threat match, Chad. It's well now the leader of Double J Records, Jeff Jarrett, takes on Chris Hero and Satoshi Kojima, and this should have main evented. Oh, well, Jeff Jarrett gets the win over Kojima and Chris Hero when Jeff Jarrett pins Chris Hero with that flying drop kick, the missile drop kick. Big win here, John. Huge win. We've seen both the leaders of both stables so far in their respective matches get the job done. I would assume Stevie Richards is in the main event. Will he get the job done? Only time will tell, I'm assuming. Well, uh, well if you should assume. It's going to be, at this point, uh, rule of elimination. It will be Hashimoto, Daniels, and Richards in our main event. Nice. I do think he will win. We move on. <laughs> the, the Mang, Mang and Rhino start fighting, Chad, because they Mang doesn't respect Rhino. Well, he does, but he doesn't agree with Rhino now being the leader of the bloodline. And Rhino's like, you don't agree with me? Fight me then. And they start fighting. And Rhino comes up on top. Ooh, yeah, good. and Meng's like, fuck, you're right, god damn it. And Rhino says, acknowledge me, Meng. And he throws, his little, he, he throws his one up. Throw your one Tell up, Chad. Up. I got it up. Throw your one up. It's up. I see you watching right now in your home, right there. I see you. Put your one up. Put your one up. Acknowledge your tribal chief, Rhino. All right, let's move to our main event, Chad. Yes, let's do it. But, but first, Savan oh, Grenier. I thought... Oh, Justin, I thought that was the rating of your main event. I said, what the fuck just happened? They attack Paul and then Brian Kendrick backstage first, Tred. Oh, damn, those bastards. All right, let's move to our main event. We're 91. That's fine. That's fine. Stevie Richards defeats Hashimoto and Chris Daniels when Chris Daniels gets hit with that Stevie kick. When Stevie Richards dumped Hashimoto out of the ring, hits Daniels with a Stevie kick, and steals a win here, Chad, over Hashimoto and Daniels. Hell yeah. Big, huge win. A huge win. What does that mean for moving forward now as all three leaders of the big three stables get the get a win? Oh, I want to see them fight now. Oh, we might have to. We might have to. We're a couple weeks away from Survivor Series, Chad. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but we end Friday Night SmackDown where Chavo Guerrero and Mystico... They have gone, they've read the note, and they've gone. Well, the note said, meet me at the saloon. Damn, they even in a bar fight with the Wild Boys? <laughs> they go to the saloon, and Latin Lover is choking out Eddie Guerrero. Well, maybe not choking him, but he's got his arm around his throat, right? Got his arm around Eddie's throat. And Chavo's like, God damn it, Latin Lover. This is it. This is it. Me and you right here. We end it. And Latin Lover says, Chavo, 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 this whole time you've had your eyes on the wrong prize. It's not me you should be worried about. It's him. And he points behind Chavo, and Mystico hits Chavo Guerrero in the back of the head with a beer bottle to knock him out. Wow, what a swerve. And Latin Lover and Mystico drag Chavo to some unknown location, and that's how we end Friday Night SmackDown. 92. Ah! 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 Big strong boy. Big strong boy. Good good ending besides the two angles. <laughs> yeah, besides that. Besides <laughs> Rhino and Brian Kendrick, you little bastards. Oh, man. What the hell is going to happen? Did Chavo, Mystico just turned on Chavo, Chad. I know, that, it's a crazy. That rat bastard. That rat bastard. That piece of shit. That's what Jim Ross said on commentary. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! That rat bastard! That, that rat bastard just turned on Chavo Guerrero! That son of a bitch just By turned God. his back on the Guerrero family! By God! I, I can't believe what I just saw! <laughs> Puppies! We'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jerry Lawler's dead. Fuck. Yes, yeah. I miss my friend Jerry Lawler! Jerry Lawler would have been pissed off, too. God damn it. 
by the love of God, that man has a family. That man has a family. All he was doing was looking out for his family. And that son of a bitch, Mystico, turned on him. God. Calm down, Jim. I can't, Michael. I'm so sick to my stomach about this. We'll see you for Friday Night Thunder. And here we have it. We have Thunder, the last show of the week, the last show before our big pay-per-views, Judgment Day and Halloween Havoc. And Justin, listen, Thunder has been, uh, Thunder squeaked out a couple good, uh, over 90 performances uh, in a row. At least last week it did. So last maybe, week. Uh, maybe, maybe Thunder could, uh, maybe Thunder could be show of the, uh, of the week. You're the first 90 for Thunder since June 2002. So well, that's cool. Your pies over there. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. As we have a pre show bout today, we've got Mr. Five Star Chris Candido taking on Bam Bam Bigelow. And in a decent pre show bout, Mr. Five Star Chris Candido defeats Bam Bam Bigelow in 6 11 with a blonde bombshell. <laughs> Shout out Bam Bam getting the 56. Yeah, shout out. Almost better than Chris Candino. After that match, uh, Chris Candino, he's celebrating in the ring, and Shane Douglas comes out, and Shane Douglas says, Chris Candino, Mr. Five Star. You talked about how you wanted to try to be the franchise. You don't think I deserve to be the franchise? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you an opportunity, all right, an opportunity to put your money where your mouth is next week on Thunder. All right, next week on Thunder, it's going to be you versus me, and it's going to be a franchise on a pole match. And the winner of that match gets to be the franchise. The franchise. Well, he's already Mr. Five Star. Why would he want to be the franchise? You can never have too many nicknames. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can't be Mr. Five Star the franchise. That's so much to say. What if he just calls himself Mr. Five Star Franchise and he just becomes a McDonald's owner? Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, we start the show off. The, uh, notice I didn't make that for the pay-per-view too, Justin, so, uh, to avoid uh, another last-minute uh, pay-per-view edition. Anyway, uh, we got The Rock versus Super Crazy today. The Rock says... Finally, The Rock has come back to Memorial Field. And he's like, you know, The Rock is excited. And as soon as he even says, like, he doesn't get any more words uh, out because Super Crazy comes out. And Super Crazy gets in the ring and he says, Rock, you know, I, 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 I'm a very realistic person. You know, I know people are looking at me and they're not really – they don't really think I have – what it takes to win the Universal Championship. But Rock, here's the thing. I know for a fact that I do. And I know for a fact that everyone's been sleeping on Super Crazy for far too long. And so tonight, I want to be able to to do something that my best friend, Hoovitude, couldn't do. All right? I want to do something that Ray couldn't do. In fact, I want to do something that no one's been able to do since you came to Thunder, which is pin you. Tonight, I challenge you one on one. And Justin, The Rock accepts the challenge. Oh, hell yeah. Rock Super Crazy main event, baby. Let's go. Rock Super Crazy. It's going to be wild. Can Super Crazy do it? Probably not. I'll tell you, can Lodi do it? Because we got Taz versus Lodi, and, uh, you know, Taz is the newest member of the cruiserweight division here on Thunder. And it is a match. Justin Taz makes short work of Lodi with a T-bone suplex. Yeah, that's the end of Lodi's run. Damn. <laughs> Taz once again making another another win in the cruiserweight division, climbing up the ranks. We have here uh, AJ Ray and Hoovy. You know they're all they're backstage, they're hanging out, and and Hoovy says, "Hey, super crazy versus Rock. That's nuts." And AJ and Ray are like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, did, did, I mean, you know him better than we do. I mean, do you think he's got a chance? And Hoovy's like, listen, if there's anybody who wants it more, it's super crazy. And speaking of somebody who wants it more, listen, it, you know, people have been asking me in the last few weeks, you know, do, who who do I think the the best member of of Limitless 
it is. Because, of course, you know, it's going to be every man for himself at the pay-per-view. And uh, Ray says, yeah, I had the, the same people keep asking me. And, of course, the answer is it, it's a no-brainer. And AJ's like, yeah, people keep asking me too. But, yeah, I always tell them the same thing. And then they all say I am at the same time. And then they all look at each other. And then they go, oh, uh, Huvitsu says, I mean, three world champions, three cruiser, three, three of the best cruiserweight champions of all time, might I add. And uh, basically, AJ, Ray, and Huvi, they realize there's only one way to settle this, Justin. And, and listen, if Super Crazy is willing to to put up against The Rock, if he's willing to step up big time and, and try to prove himself, well, maybe they should lead by his example. Their other Limitless Tag Team Partners example. And Justin, they agree to fight tonight. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the limit, the members of Limitless to see. Just you're really, who is. you're really trying to beat me this week. <laughs> that one, that, that one, that that match, I will, I will admit, that match was to try to squeak out a win. That's that so one, that fucked, one, Chad. That, and that's, well, <laughs> that's. I was gonna, I, I, I was gonna have them wrestle as some kind of tag team. Match, Karma's gonna said, strike nah. on this. Karma, Ray's going down with a leg injury. Karma's coming. Karma's coming. What? We'll have to see, but nonetheless, we have Mr. Here, Justin, I don't care about have, the ratings. I'm trying to tell stories. I mean, I think I did tell a story. I you think just said I booked reason. a match just to beat you today, Justin. Yeah, it's. A, I didn't say it was just that. It was to squeak it out, but I think it's storyline wise, it makes sense too. And it accomplishes both. We said he, we said it ourselves in the last in the last week in the recordings. If I happen, you know, if if, if, if what you have the best show of the week, you probably had the best story too. But nonetheless, That's not we what anyone said. I think check the tape. I think that's exactly what we said. That's, I, I'm telling you right now, you have I have better stories. <laughs> well, not all together, but like you have great stories, but that doesn't mean you have the best show of the week. I mean, true. we've decided that it's not about ratings, Chad. It's about better yeah. stories. I think this is a good, good story, but I think if it also gets a better rating, then I'll be happy. But anyway, <laughs> we have a tag team match here. Listen, so Mino- Suzuki and uh, is fighting Bobby Roode at Halloween Havoc, and Sting is facing off against Taka for the Million Dollar Championship, and so Roddy Piper booked this little tag team match tonight, and in about the head good wrestling and these reaction of the crowd, Bobby Roode and Sting defeated Taka and Suzuki when Suzuki intentionally got himself uh, disqualified while fighting Bobby Roode. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. Poor Sting. Sting's fucked. And then, after the match, Suzuki and his girlfriend, Wendy Waiters, uh, well, Wendy Bobby Waters. Was, Wendy, I think it's Waiters, but it's I think spelled. it's pronounced Waiters, but it might be Waters. I know it's spelled Waters, but I do think it's Waiters, but maybe it's Waters. Who knows? Either way, Suzuki and his girlfriend, Wendy, uh, are standing over at Bobby Roode, who, who again, due to uh, Minoru Suzuki's horrible disqualification, um, uh, she was able to... Uh, he was able to stand tall over an unconscious Bobby Roode. Is this what we're going to see at, at, at the pay per view, Justin? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Who do you think? So, who, who, who early prediction for Suzuki Roode? Uh, um, look, realistically, it should be Suzuki, but uh, prediction wise, it's Roode. Only time will tell. As we have here, we got CM Punk versus, or no, sorry, a segment with CM Punk and Raven. CM Punk, he uh, he's sitting in a nursing home, and he uh, he's playing checkers with a resident of the nursing home, and he and he looks up and he just says, "Oh, hi everyone, I'm over here at this nursing home, uh, and I'm hanging out with all of the residents here. I've spent the entire day playing bingo, he, um, taking lots of naps, watching." Watching uh, the Price is Right and all the other game shows on the Game Show Network, you know, I've been I've been scoping it out and, and trying to find a good spot because I really think that after I take out Raven at the pay per view at Halloween Havoc, when I finally shut him up, I think he could come stay here. I mean, I've made great friends with this man right here. This name's Mister Robinson. Hello, Mister Robinson. How are you? And the guy said, "I don't know who you are." And CM Punk is like, "He's." Don't listen to him. Anyway, Raven, listen to me. All jokes aside, at Halloween Havoc, I am not just going to beat you. I am going to retire you. I'm going to make everyone know just how washed up you are. I'm going to make everyone know that Owen Hart was right to dump you. To dump you. I'm going to prove that you won't be a world champion ever again. And I will prove that this company's future 
has never been brighter because that future contains CM Punk. And Justin, we have a fatal four-way tag team match uh, featuring, of course, Truth or Chairs, Quick City Kingpins, the Harris Twins, and the reigning defending <laughs> NXT tag team champions as of officially, Justin. What are the odds? We checked. Uh, it, it was uh, I was on the headline news that they won, and uh, so I booked him here just so uh, I, I could say that. So, uh, But yes, uh, the Quick City Kingpins in this match defeated Truth or Chairs, Carly Cologne, and Kenny Omega. Um, so yeah, nice little tag team showcase. Of course, the Hearts and the Rose Grace tag team are occupied in their own right, but you know, still got to show what this tag team can do. Uh, we are backstage. AJ Styles is getting ready for his big match, and Billy Kidman once again uh, comes up to him, uh, and he 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 throws AJ Styles some key, uh, uh, a pair of car keys, and AJ's like, "What's this?" And Kidman's like, "AJ, come on, listen. I understand I'm not in charge anymore, but like, I made really really good money when I was running the show, and you don't think I I saved some?" AJ, come on. I bought you this car. It's the least I could do. It's just me trying to show my my sympathy, my 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 guilt. So please, come on. Ex accept my apology and let's let's be friends again. And AJ's like, "Billy, you only want to be my friend so you can try to climb back up into power. You can take your keys and you can drive on home because I'm not interested. And please stay out of my business." And then he walks away. And Justin, I don't know if you remember, but last week I said that the uh, World's Greatest Tag Team were going to challenge Owen and Brett to singles matches, respectively. respectively. And uh, so we get our first one right now. We got Shelton Benjamin versus Owen Hart. And in a decent match, Owen Hart defeats Shelton Benjamin uh, by illegally using the ropes for leverage, Justin. That, that cheeky heel, he cheated to beat Shelton Benjamin. Um, and we have a, a tough end. We have to get Jeremy Borash here. He is once again. He's got Kevin Steen and he's got T.J. Wilson. He's got the tough enough rookies. And uh, once again, a very similar poll that he had up to Giant Singh and um, Matt Seidel. And this one is a lot more even split. I, uh, it's still uh, some people are still favoring T.J. Wilson. Um, of course, you know it was announced in Tough Enough his connections to. Brett and Owen, who are actually on Thunder now, coincidentally, both of them. But also the uh, training of Eddie Colon um, uh, has been really has really been uh, it's been really clicking with this rookie, and so I think that the early advantage over Kevin Steen. But listen, time will tell. Kevin Steen is a tough son of a bitch, so who knows? But we move on to our next segment. We got Charlie Haas versus Brett Hart. And in about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Bret Hart defeats Charlie Haas with a sharpshooter. Uh, basically, Charlie Haas he was he was it was looking like he was uh, about to pull the upset of his career. It looked like he was about to get the upper hand on Bret, but of course Owen ran in and screwed Charlie Haas. The Hearts are trying their best to not be uh, look embarrassed uh, from the world's greatest tag team. And after the match, Brett and Owen they're celebrating in the ring. Their backs are turned to the world's greatest tag team, and the world and, and Shelton and, and Haas they look at each other, and then they both go and they uh, schoolboy pin uh, Brett and Owen like for like ten seconds. They get the clear visual like, hey, not only like can we pin you, but like if you turn your backs to us, if you take us lightly, like it's probably going to happen. A big symbolic message was set. You know, Brett and Owen they had to basically cheat. So we will see what happens when these teams collide at Halloween Havoc. As we get to our co-main event, we got Rock versus Super Crazy. And about that great heat and good wrestling, Rock defeats Super Crazy in 1803. Super Crazy, you know, he, what can you say? I mean, he, he tried his best, but at the end of the day, no one's been able to beat The Rock. And uh, to be honest with you, it, it, it's looking like it, well, it, it was looking like it's probably going to continue tonight because he, uh, yeah, a pretty tall order, and he was able to pick up the win and defeat Super Crazy here today. After the match, The Rock, he gets out of the ring, and he comes and he sits at the commentary table to join our commentary team because he wants to scout his opponents in this match. And about that Super Wrestling and Great Heat, Rey Mysterio defeats AJ and Juventude. 
when Ray pinned AJ with a springboard hurricanrana. You know, AJ's probably wishing he had those keys now so he could drive himself home after that win. But alas, listen, Ray Mysterio, big win tonight, picking up that last minute momentum over uh, heading towards the pay per view. And Thunder gets a 96. 